We have a six marker here on transition metals. It says in the periodic table, the transition elements and group one elements are both metals. Some of the properties of two transition elements and two group one elements are shown in the table below. So we're talking about chromium, iron, which are two transition metals. You'll find them in the middle of the periodic table. And then we've got sodium and cesium, which are both found in group one. So on the far left of the periodic table. The question says, use your own knowledge as well as the data in the table to compare the chemical and physical properties of transition elements and group one elements. It says chemical and physical properties. So that's given us an indication into what this question wants. So what I'm going to do is split up the question into two parts here. We've got transition metals on the left and group one elements on the right. So let's talk about what's in the table first of all. We've only got two different comparisons here. So first one is the melting point. You can see quite clearly the melting points of the transition elements are much much higher than the two group one elements we have. So we can say high melting points for transition metals and low melting points for group one elements. The other piece of information in the transition metals is the formulas of oxide. So they've given this for a specific reason. What can you see as the difference between the two? Well, for chromium, there are four different types of oxide that it can form. Iron can form three different oxides, whereas group one elements, so sodium and cesium, can only form one different oxide. So this is to do with one unique property about transition elements. They can form ions with loads of different charges. So for iron, for example, it can form an Fe2 plus ion and it can also form an Fe3 plus ion. It can form multiple different charges. Whereas for sodium and chromium, they can only form ions with plus one on them. So that's one of the chemical properties that we have. So we can say for transition metals, it forms ions with different charges. And for group one metals, it only forms plus one ions. So we've covered the data that they've given us. So now we need to use our own knowledge to add some more stuff to this answer. So other things we can talk about is the reactivity. Transition metals have a low reactivity, whereas the group one metals have a high reactivity. Transition metals are generally more dense. Another thing we can talk about is the fact that group one elements are soft, whereas transition metals are much harder. So let's add one more here. We can just say that transition metals can be used as catalyst, whereas alkali metals cannot. And there we go. That's how you get six marks there.